Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so the topic for today's lecture is notional functional syllabus. A notional functional syllabus is an approach where the organization of the material is determined with notions or ideas that learners expect to be able to express through the target language and the functions the acts learners expect to be able to accomplish. The definition of notional functional syllabus was presented by Wilkins in 1976. So guys basically in this type of syllabus it contains the same teaching materials as traditional syllabus but organizes them in different ways such as around uses or functions that was presented by Harlow and Linda L. in 1978. Again, according to Wilkins, uh, proponents uh, of this kind of approach believe that the usage of language for learners is more important than the digestion of an unapplied system of grammatical forms. Therefore, a notional functional syllabus is a kind of communicative uh, syllabus which organizes units with the foundation of some functions such as uh, asking questions, expressing opinions, expressing wishes, making suggestions, complaining and apologizing rather than including units. In, uh, instructing noun gender or pre present tense ending that was presented by Wilkins okay according to uh, Wilkins uh, as we have discussed it before so first of all uh, I want to show you people that how the notional functional syllabus was brought about and influenced by both theories of language and language learning ac learning acquisition So guys, before discussing uh, the influence uh, of uh, the notional functional uh, syllabus on the both theories of language and language learning acquisition, I want to discuss the strengths and weaknesses of notional functional syllabus with you people. That is uh, the strengths and weaknesses of the notional functional syllabus by the relation between uh, it and communicative language teaching and putting it into the practice. Because the functional notional syllabus is intimately related to communicative language teaching, this type of syllabus has lots of significant merits. However, the relationship between communicative language teaching and functional notional uh, syllabus design is far from clear. It does present some problems when it is put into practice as well as criticizing the structural syllabus for being product based which is focusing on what language is learned and opposed to process based which is focusing on how language is learned. The functional notional syllabus would contain a list of items to be learned that rather than a specification of how they are to be learned. However, the notional functional syllabus is not considered with traditional structure but function. Such formal strategies may not be so useful because uh, it is more difficult to generalize uh, uh, from functions or use them to create new sentences. A further problem of the notional uh, functional syllabus was presented with regard to grading as there was lack of uh, evidence to concern the frequency of functions and when selecting which forms should be used to realize functions textbooks uh, textbook writers had to depend on intuition however it is an uh, approach uh, which has significant contributions in fulfilling the needs of both foreign language students and teachers as well 
ओके ओके द नोशनल फंक्शन सिलेबस कंसर्नस टू इम्पॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट्स वन इज़ अ नोशनल एंड और कंसेप्चुअल व्यू विच इज़ इन्वॉल्व विद सम कंसेप्ट सच एज टाइम स्पेस मूवमेंट कॉज एंड इफेक्ट अनदर वन इज फंक्शनल व्यू विच इज यूज फॉर इंटेंशनल और परपसिव डिस्क्रिप्टिव एंड क्लासीफिकेशन it is a new type of syllabus because it could take notional functional categories uh, as an organizing principle which would not only be determined by grammatical considerations but also be concerned with communicative categories into account as well all of the grammatical syllabus Uh, the situational syllabus and notional functional syllabus belong to type a syllabuses neither grammatical nor situational syllabus would be denied that the purpose of learning languages is to communicate both of them give learners few uh, adequate opportunities to promote the communicative capacity however Uh, the notional functional syllabus takes the desired communicative capacity as the starting point from the notional functional syllabus it asks speakers to communicate through language so the designers are able to organize language teaching in concerning of the content rather than the form of the language so here guys i want to first discuss with you people the advantages means strengths or you can say merits of uh, notional functional syllabus so starting with it the advantages of the notional syllabus include that it could consider the communicative facts of language from the beginning with concerning of grammatical and situational factors so it is superior to grammatical syllabus possibly in the grammatical syllabus language elements are demonstrated more in complete possibilities of the language than the use of it needed in conversation so learners would complain that foreign language learning is not practical and they have few opportunities to use out of it however a functional notional syllabus would teach language to use it rather than instructing the use of its exclusive forms as teaching the language through its uses learners would consider the utility and the relevance of their study moreover harlow and linda Uh, in 1978 pointed that by perceiving language as a real means of communication learners would feel more motivated to learn as they would feel what they were learning is useful language functions in a real life setting uh, would generate a special kind of excitement for learning and leads the, uh, to productive learning therefore as comparing to the structural syllabus where elements of language are learned is an isolated way from real life uh, students communicative competence and confidence can be well developed and teachers can revitalize teaching materials to meet learning objectives in functional notional approach study furthermore the functional notional syllabus is superior to the situational syllabus because it can include both of the most important grammatical forms and all kinds of language functions in it rather than concentrate those exist in specific situations typically 
so from uh, the things i have uh, discussed with you about the strengths can uh, say that uh, we can say uh, that uh, this type of syllabus does have some significant merits so the first merit of uh, the functional notional syllabus uh, is that uh, it emphasizes the fact that students and their communicative purposes are at the very core of the teaching program the learners actual and uh, foreseeable academic uh, social and vocational needs will underlie all aspects of the programs of linguistic and cultural content while due attention is uh, given to certain aspects of selection and uh, grading of linguistic uh, cultural content the primary consideration is those functions that persons of a particular age level in a particular situation would wish or need to express thus it suits the need of learners this syllabus is extremely useful for esp classes in which the learners can learn part of the language which they are badly in need without wasting their time and energy for detailed study of the whole language system the second merit of this syllabus is that uh, the act of communication even at the elementary levels will be intrinsically Uh, motivating unlike the grammatical syllabus which separates the language into discrete items and from which the learners have to communicate competence at the very beginning the language forms its functions and communicative skills they have learned can be used immediately in the communicative activities and in role plays or even in the real world this direct effect of language use motivates the learners they feel quite satisfied and are eager to learn as much as possible according to their needs because they are not passive listeners but active participants The third merit is that language functions are quite generalizing according to Wilkins in 1973 or in 1976 eight types of communicative functions are recognized uh, that is eight kinds of things learners can do with language such as modality that is to express degrees of certainty necessity conviction obligation and tolerance the second one is moral moral discipline and evaluation that is judgment approval or disapproval the third one is suasion that is persuasion persuasion recommendation and productions the fourth one is argument argument means information asserted or sought agreement denial or concession the fifth one is uh, rational inquiry and exposition that means authors not similar in sub categories to argument and evaluation next is personal emotions personal emotions mean positive and negative next is emotional relations that is greeting flattery hostility next is interpersonal relations that means uh, uh, politeness and uh, status uh, means degree of formality and informality in a word that uh, the functions of language the very core of functional notional syllabus are fairly generalizing
so uh, that was all about uh, the strengths the merits and uh, the uh, you can say merits of uh, the notional functional syllabus and uh, we are heading towards the weaknesses next so guys here are the weaknesses of uh, functional notional syllabus every syllabus has its demerits you know so does the functional notional syllabus we putting it into practice we will find that it presents some problems as well what could make learners be able to communicate best in the foreign language decide the process of what to teach so we can uh, when we can decide the most appropriate forms of uh, each uh, type of communication we can establish the syllabus although hedge in 2000 claims that uh, structural syllabuses are amendable to planning provide systematicity and make learners feel secure the symbol of the each learning unit is semantic basically Nunan in nineteen eighty eight asserts that an alternative to the grammatically oriented textbook may not solve all the problems in language teaching. These lists of functional and uh, functions and notions do not reflect the way languages are learned. Dividing language into discrete units. of functions may misrepresent the nature of language as communication therefore the structural syllabuses coverage with the notional functional ones they are both product based synthetic syllabuses in short the semantic which means meaning of the text needs of learners decide the planning of the linguistic content so we are heading towards the problems the weaknesses the first one uh, problem is that language functions alone are not satisfactory organizing principle in the first place some realizations of functions are in fact little more than fixed phrases phrases for example you must be joking or come off it etc it may be important to learn them but uh, that is all we learn in uh, in other words uh, some functional exponents are just single items we cannot use them to generate more language as we can uh, with grammatical structure The second problem lies in the selection of items for the syllabus and the grading and sequencing of the items which should be selected and come first as white in 1988 notes that there was a dearth of evidence for the frequency of functions and that when uh, selecting which forms should be used to realize functions textbook writers had to depend on intuition what order should the grammar be taught in for students to be able to apply it to uh, functions white also knows notes that uh, the small amount of empirical evidence regarding the natural order of acquisition of functions by children was not directly applicable to adult language learning this problem was exacerbated uh, by the fact that linguistically complex forms could appear in more basic and essential functions such as requesting requesting means would you mind closing the window in the functional notional syllabus the specification of needs may well turn out to be as global as the specification of types of situation does for the situational syllabus richards points that the term needs is not as straightforward as it might appear and suggests that 
uh, what is identified as a need is dependent on judgment and reflects the interests and values of those making such a judgment moreover Wilkins notes that uh, the forms are asked to, uh, asked to express the semantic needs so they would be extremely varied. So here is the third problem that is impossibility of defining functions with uh, pre precision and clarity. Although speech act theories have proposed conditions whereby a given speech act may be defined as performing a given function. No reference is made to such specification in protosyllabus nor indeed in any other similar listings. The absence of a specification of conditions which limit or, de uh, or determine the interpretation of a given function means that there is uh, at best some ambiguity and at worst total misunderstanding over what is meant by such functions as expressing intention, expressing one is not obliged to do something or expressing dissatisfaction. So next is the theory of notional functional syllabus. Uh, notional functional syllabus is an approach where the organization of the material is determined with notions or ideas that learners expect to be able to express through the target language and the functions acts learners expect to be able to accomplish. The functional notional syllabus takes semantic knowledge as primary and attempts to answer the question what do users of the language need to express this implies a belief in language as a system but a system of meaning rather than forms it answer that uh, learning language consists of uh, learning how to mean such a syllabus would see correlations between form and function but would define the link as being between the forms of the language available to the user and the meanings he wishes to express. As described by Wilkins, the functional notional syllabus has its starting point something different from either the grammatical syllabus or the situational one. He also points that uh, uh, it is not the linguistic items to be taught but rather the behavioral organization in terms of the purposes of uh, purposes for which language is being learned and the kinds of language performance in terms of language functions necessary for such purposes. The roots of this type of labels uh, would be to look at kinds of meanings which have to be considered in second language teaching. Theory of notional functional syllabus. Uh, notional functional syllabus is an approach where the organization of the material is determined uh, with notions or ideas that learners expect to be able to express through the target language and the functions acts learners expect to be able to accomplish. The functional notional syllabus takes semantic knowledge as primary and attempts to answer the question what do users do uh, what do users of the language need to express? This implies a belief in language as a system but a system of meaning rather than forms. It answered that learning language consists of learning how to mean. Such a syllabus would see correlation between uh, form and function, but would define the link as being between forms of the language available to the user and the meanings he wishes to express. As Wilkins points that the meaning must be considered through the study of language in use, 
language in discourse so we study the communicative functions of language and their relation to grammatical forms through uh, approach language in this way moreover the goal of learning language is communicative and not formal perfection in the learner language is seen as essentially a function of society serving an interpersonal role and making each speaker a member of a speech community through its use meanwhile the grammatical syllabus teaches the language for learners by taking them progressively through the structures of the target language the situational syllabus does so through recreating the situations in which native speakers use the language wilkins also points that the combination of grammar lexis stylistic uh, linguistics and non linguistic context and in speech intonation ensures that any two sentences hardly have exactly the same meaning since the learning of a language is most commonly identified with acquiring digestion of its grammatical system it is not surprising that most courses have grammatical pedagogic uh, organization and uh, courses are based on the systematic introduction of vocabulary and others uh, which take uh, language situations as the starting point therefore the functional notional uh, syllabus is not necessarily mutually exclusive regarding them form the linguistic point of view richards asserts that the notional functional syllabus not only be considered with an analytic approach for restarting uh, for language learning but uh, also was combined with restarting of the traditional structure grammar rules as functions so from above richards and rogers asserts that uh, one of the first syllabus models to be proposed for communicative teaching was described as the notional uh, notional functional syllabus and the uh, progenitor of the notional syllabus is himself and wilkins highlights that the communicative purposes of language learning link the notional approach to the wider communicative movement in language teaching therefore the notional functional syllabus was one answer to the question of what kind of course content should be used to lead learners acquire the ability to convey communicative meaning through language so guys uh, here is the conclusion the notional functional syllabus is brought and influenced uh, both uh, by both theories of language and language learning acquisition that we have just uh, discussed in the previous slide uh, and uh, there are clear benefits connected with the notional functional syllabus associated with the communicative teaching approach and plenty of criticisms exist when put it into practice as well however as a communicative teaching approach the utility of the functional notional syllabus will be in a wide range of uh, teaching situation across the world continually so as considering theories which influence the functional notional syllabus and characteristics of this type of syllabus there are two kinds of teaching situations to be discussed are best suitable ones however there are also lots of questions haven't been uh, solved such as what kinds of particular circumstances are in when students are instructed in the notional functional approach how much grammatical knowledge can be assumed how restricted is the need for english how long will the students study english will they have the time and opportunity to learn how to apply 
any grammatical foundation founded in a course these questions it can be uh, above these questions it can be automatically assumed uh, that uh, which kind of common teaching situation is the best suitable one however 